hey, you, yeah, you, you clicked on this video. You clicked on this video because of the title, or maybe the thumbnail. This is something that I have been wanting to cover for a while, but have not had much of anything to read. But <clears throat> that has changed. I now have things to read about the back states. To start, the back states are in between Nebraska and Missouri. They are 91 states hidden between two states. Nine, 91 fucking states. <clears throat> now, what is the purpose of this, you may say? I ask myself the same question. But join me in this ride into the back states, and I will explain all of these states, or at the very least, try my very best to. Now, I will be going in order of position here. So, the first. The first back state that I will be reading is Oibloff. And let's go. Welcome to Oibloff, home of anomaly and some very strange happenings. As every back state really is, this is Oibloff, a back state that is within the eastern part of the back states. It is to the west of Iowa, bordered by the, Miss the Missouri River to the east. It also shares a border with New Virginia to its north and Aserot and Jintask to its west. However, this means little, as heading to the west in Oibloff will lead you into eastern Nebraska. Due to the Oibloff, Nebraska spatial anomaly, Oibloff is considered one of the gateways to the back states proper and is often confused with eastern Nebraska due to the aforementioned anomaly. The capital of Oibloff is Lincoln, with a population of, approx of approximately 500,000 and 3,501 people. However, Omaha is the largest city and metropolitan area with, an, with a population of approximately 3 million. 3.5 million if you count the shared metropolitan area of, of, can, of Council Bluffs, Iowa. Oibloff is composed of two major regions, the East and the Oibloff, Nebraska anomaly. The East is composed of mostly open rolling plains and forests, as well as the Missouri River. There are minor areas of tundra the further north you go <coughs> into the regions Sh towards New Virginia. The Oibloff, Nebraska anomaly, often shortened to the Gap, is composed of mostly rolling plains and prairie land. What makes this region stand out is how to almost seamlessly lead to, to Nebraska, and that the gap in Oibloff perfectly aligns with the gap in Nebraska. History. The history of Oibloff is mostly unrecorded and unverifiable due to the historical confusion and connection to Nebraska, and many historical events that took place in Oibloff are falsely attributed to have happened in Nebraska. It is generally accepted that indigenous activity and settlement was limited in Oibloff due to native superstition of the anomaly and desire to avoid the area. There are a few historical records of Oibloff prior to 1855, when what is generally considered the first settlement and city of the state, Plattsmouth, 
was settled and incorporated. Plattsmouth was named in accordance to its geographical location being at the mouth of the Platte River, which forked off of the Missouri River. Plattsmouth was a hotbed for witchcraft and other paranormal activity, most likely due to its proximity to the Gap. In 1905, due to the restructuring, the main town of Plattsmouth was quarantined and abandoned and built over with a new town of the same name being above the old main street. Okay, so here's a note from me. This state on screen right now is New Virginia. Um, it was mentioned in Oibloff, if, if you remember, but uh, I couldn't find anything on New Virginia, so I'm going to go on ahead to tee it in or tie it in. Okay, so another note, and like during recording, a lot of these... Uh, some of these states might not have entries, so please try and bear that in mind because the back states still, like, are not very popular. They're kind of a niche, so they there will be some states I may skip over, and I will probably list those states in the description, maybe. It's... Maybe I'll, maybe it'll be in the description, maybe in comments, but they will be listed, the ones that I have skipped. This is Jintask. Jintask is home of crime. There's a lot of things in Jintask, but let's just start at the beginning. Jintask is a poor and polluted fogland state, like several other back states. Its sky is tainted gray and filled with clouds and of soot due to the gigantic trains that pass through. Fogland states to haul ores from Flandida to Glade. Worsening matters, the train stores soot in special compartments while in Glade. Classical only releasing it when they enter Jintask. Culture. Nobody who can afford to build a house in Jintask would ever actually build a house in Jintask due to its high crime, pollution, and poverty levels. Most of the state's buildings are scrapped from parts of other things like cars, furniture, anything they can find. Materials are scarce and usually burned for warmth during the winter, so they're very highly prized in this state. Scrapmen. Originally from herds and retye, scrapmen scrap are experts in extracting all possible value from anything they can find, including humans. Some prefer, they prefer to live where scrapped materials are the most valuable to get maximum profit from their extractions. Most of them live near the tracks in hopes of scavenging whatever falls off the trains. To ensure they do not leave, the few backstates they are allowed to lurk ensure the safety of the trains, and to ensure visitors never run out of gas in states where they dwell, many special gas stations are strategically set up in scrapmen states to monitor them. They are staffed heavily by armed security experts who swap out with one another every few months and serve as bases should they need to stop the scrapmen from escaping from their designated back states. This is classical, a state that's a fog state, and it has other things. It is a border to Jintask. Classical borders Jintask to the north Kansas and Oklahoma to the east, Texas and Glade to the south, and Erskine and Tender to the west. It is considered a fogland state because of the massive trains that will run through the state to transport or to Glade. Many fogland states have soot-filled skies, hence the name, but Classical and several others are mostly free of blackened skies because the trains store their soot in special compartments while in the state. 
Glasgow is named after the founder of the first colony in the state, Scott James Glasgow. Its capital is Scotts River, which is also its largest city. Safety. The United States Department of Backstate Travel classifies Glasgow as not dangerous, although they do warn visitors of the eye bales that roam the state's grasslands, forests, and wheat fields. They are not normally hostile to humans, but will attack if provoked. Rarely, they will accidentally crush people to death, so it's a felony to be within 50 feet of one. To protect Glade's gigantic stash of precious materials, the federal government partially funds Classical's police department and infrastructure out of state. Visitors are made to show their IDs at the border to ensure they are not scrapmen or affiliated with any other potentially dangerous groups and do not have any warrants or weapons. Wheat fields, gigantic grassy fields called wheat fields, sometimes appear at random spots within the state. It is believed they only spawn when they aren't being directly observed by human eyes. Local farmers are quick to turn these fields into farmland, hence the name. Whenever they appear when they are not being directly observed by human eyes, they will eventually disappear. So farmers hire farm watchers to watch and patrol their wheat fields. Hello, this is Glade, a state that is bordered by classical to the east. Well, a state that is bordered to the north by classical, to the east by Texas, and to the west by Erskotent. This fogland state is well known for its ore exports, which it receives from gigantic trains that haul them from Vlon Dited to this state. Somewhere between the Glade Texas portal is a portal is a portal to the front states, though there are two though there are conflicting reports as to how and when this portal was made, its creation seems to have split Texas into two parts and may also be responsible for the changing of Oklahoma's border history. In late 1861, Glade was founded by Confederate General Jacob G. Massey. At its founding, it was considerably smaller, named Dixieland. It was immediately entered into the Confederacy. At the time, the state was home to many red-skinned native tribes, mainly the Hua Jork, the Hua Jorkian, the Hua, Hua, Huas, or Huas. The Huas worshipped bismuth, silver, gold, diamond, and other precious metals, believing they brought them luck and made their gods happy, among other things. They wore them and decorated their dwellings with them. Massey and his men were soon greeted by the, by Hua leader, Hopping Rabbit, whose clothing was made almost entirely of silver, bismuth, and gold. Massey asked Rabbit where he obtained the jewelry and was told he had acquired it from a northern tribe named Vlonditwana. Because of their white skin, Rabbit believed they were gods and gifted them many precious metals that Massey sold to help fund the Confederacy. Massey led numerous raids on the Hua tribes, killing hundreds of natives and stealing millions of dollars of metals. They soon discovered a gigantic road, Heohea, that led from numerous native tribes to the Vlondichuana tribes and mines in what is now Vlondited. Once there, Massey and his men once again began raiding native tribes for their metals. When there was no more metal to steal, Massey enslaved thousands of them, forcing them to mine ore and build rails on the road that led to Dixieland. The rails were completed in early 1863. Massey asked other Confederates for help in designing a train to cross the rails, but the rails were ridiculously wide because nobody involved had any idea how to build them. 
Despite this, they managed to find an engineer to design and oversee the creation of the train, which was finished in late 1864. Unfortunately, because of the large size of the train, the cost of the train outweighed the value of the exports it gave the Confederacy. In 1865, when the Confederacy fell and Texas rejoined the Union, Union soldiers took control of train or of train slash or slash mines. They would eventually go on to rename Dixieland to Glade, build several more trains, and give it the border it has today. In the months leading to this, the train helped Confederates flee various Confederacy states to move to modern-day Tyden in New Virginia, which remain Confederate to this day. The railway's slaves were freed in 1952. Today, the state is unofficially run by Texas, and all ore goes to the U.S. government, which sells it as exports. So, before I start this one for Plasted, um... I'm going to say I'm not sure if this first part, um, until the Enjoy Your Stay, we hope to, well, until Enjoy Your Stay, we hope to see you soon part, is actually canon, if it's some sort of advertisement, or if sponsored, I don't know. So, take this with a grain of salt, because this might not be part of actual Plastid's history. Welcome to Plastid's homepage. Whether you're a long-time resident looking for a fresh start or just looking around, Plastid is open to everyone. If you're looking for an application to Plastid Construction Company, there's that's still under construction. So sit tight. You can, however, still contact us at application at plastid.co or at our 24-7 toll-free hotline number 999-900-1990. Enjoy your stay. We hope to see you soon. History of Plastid Plastid was founded in 1917 by founder Edward C. Plastid. It started off as a quaint mining town due to the plentiful gypsum-rich deposits deep under the city. There, the city began to spiral outwards. People rushed into the area to do the job opportunities at Plastid. Plastid Construction Company offered, and still offers today. Even though the gypsum has long since gone in most areas, the catacombs beneath the sprawling streets and the awe-inspiring, ever-growing skyscrapers remain. Plastid still hasn't gained its statehood, even after campaigning from the citizens to be officially recognized. It currently has 7.5 million people living within the endless city, Remember to vote yes on Plastid becoming a state. Culture. Plastid's culture is rather unique. Due to being one huge city, there is no one set cultural norm. Subcultures tend to come and go within Plastid, and it's at the forefront of every emerging trend. One of Plastid's most notable subcultures is the Constructo Punk scene that started in West Plastid and quickly caught on in the rest of the city and surrounding areas. Constructo Punk is considered unique for its distinctive rough sounds, which include the noises of jackhammers and wielding and welding that every cit plastid citizen is acquainted with. Notable Constructo Notable Constructed Punk bands are the Framers, Jack's Hammer, in high debts, high rises. In East Plastid's fashion district, you find all the latest trends, from the fashionable sequence-covered coveralls to the astonishing high-platformed steel-toed boots with built-in metatarsal protection. You'll find it all. A new trend this summer is an old-school custom welding masks, which bring a blast to the past, mixed with the new school clinic chic. So ditch those sunglasses and join the herd. North Plastid is where you can see the most stunning architectural marvels that seem to defy physics. Tour guides will show you 
around through any part of the city for very modest prices. So what are you waiting for? You can do anything in Plasted. Warning, not every part of Plasted is safe. By the south, many areas are abandoned due to closing of many gypsum mines. However, in those abandoned buildings lay many squatters and potential criminals. Meh. Many travelers have gone missing uh, by the south due to poking around just a little too much. Never travel there alone and do not explore any kind of the old gypsum mines without an experienced partner. Trivia. A record number of a record number of revolutionary architects have come from Plasted, including John Q. Harper, maker of the eggshell housing model, Gregory S. Liddell, constructor of the Megadome, and Ronald. 4.3% of Plasted's population works or has worked in the construction industry. 27% of employees are employed by the Plasted Construction Company. Plasted is the only city that also happens to be a state. Friends don't let friends go into the gypsum mines. If you hear someone planning to go into them, remind them of this. If push comes to shove, call the authorities. Better a snitch than have someone dead. Plasted is still being constructed and has been in construction since it was founded. Construction has never once stopped in the city, no matter the weather. Opium has always been legal in the state. Plastics and polyester are banned for use in beddings and curtains. Welcome to Tyres, the literal shithole. It's bordered by Tyres to the east, formerly Uppens, Paxis to the north, Green Acres to the northwest, Herds to the west, and Jestask to the south and southeast. It is also bordered by a gigantic wall made of botched fecal matter facing the state, and actual building materials such as brick, concrete, mixed rocks, wood facing other states. This wall is incredibly tall and wide, though exact measurements are currently unknown. The wall has many entrances, though they are often blocked, and were built for nonsensical reasons, except for the exterior, which was mostly built by non-residents to keep the residents inside the state and hide the vast amount of botched scat. Residents of Tyres believe the state is most famous for its recreational rug-sucking and haircuts inspired by men who use Tumblr. This is false. Tyres is most famous for the idiocy of its residents, right next to Florida. Many hallucinogenic plants and animals are native to Tyres, and many more have been introduced by the residents and state government. Tyres was the first state to legalize the recreational sale and use use of mushrooms, gindle whip, ayahuasca, and all other hallucinogenic drugs in 1605. For those 20 and older, in 1724, the legal age was lowered to 16. In 1803, the age was increased to 18. 1854, the age was lowered to 13. 1967, the age was lowered to 4 where it is now. Spagonia. The vast majority of the state's inhabitants live in the city of Spagonia. It is near the south of the state, downwards of the... <laughs> downward of the Pismin River. The citizens of Spagonia... Spagonis? live in pyramids of their own batched fecal matter. Spagonies believe the poop poop mids protect them from mating with their computers, masturbating to online porn slash hentai, an act they consider to be full of evil hubris, hubris as well as green men and orange cats. 
local superstitions. By far the most popular space, the most popular place in Spagonia is Frank Street. Despite its name, it's not a street, but a brothel. The brothel is run by the state, and the only sex act allowed is drawing on other people's genitals with a felt-tipped marker. There are sexual and non-sexual rooms to do this in, depending on your preference. Most Spagonies falsely believe Spagonia is a back state. Even when confronted with absolute, undeniable proof, they will never admit that Spagonia is not a back state. They are like that with most of their beliefs, although it varies from person to person. Politics. Tyres is a strictly Democrat state. All of its governors since its creation have been Democrats or Republican. Democrats, not to be confused with Democratic Republicans. Culture and sports. Tyres culture is characterized by its bizarre and often nonsensical beliefs. For example, many residents in Tyres believe the only state of existence is roided fear of being voted to drown in a piss ball while the stage rotates around you, your little fella man. It is unclear what it what it is meant by this, as piss ball never happens to happens on a rotating anything, but it is something they often say. Piss ball is a game wherein all the players enter a large plastic ball that the observers pee into. Eventually, as the ball becomes more and more full of piss, the players will start to drown and run out of air, drown to death. The winner is the one that does not drown. Killing other players is considered poor sportsmanship and is punished with another game of piss ball. Residents find the game absolutely hilarious. This ball has been played by residents for thousands of years, dating back to the natives who originally inhabited the land. It has caused the average height of tires, excluding natives, to be one whole inch above the national average, due to the advantage taller people have. Tires, red-skinned native people, having had played their very similar version of piss ball for the 3.5 times as long as the European settlers are an astounding advantage average of 10 inches taller than the average human and have gigantic bladders on the average almost twice bigger than normal. Apart from piss ball, tires hosts many festivals, the most famous, famous of which being Next Bit, where festival goers get to be violently assaulted and often killed by five randomly picked strangers who wear a single pickle suit. Residents find the festival absolutely hilarious. It is illegal to defend yourself from them, the punishment being piss ball. Trivia. The biggest cooperative conglomerate is the, co- is the corporate untitled milk shit <laughs> in Spagonia. Not to be confused in Spagoia. Not to be confused with Spagonia. All citizens are required to put semen on all of their meals to preserve tea counts lest the sperm kings hire the one guy A-K-T-T-L-Y, shove a bad dragon sugar cane shaped dildo in your browser hole, as they say in tires. Despite their constant drug use, tires has never invented a drug, possibly because of their constant drug use. To stop the maggots from feasting on our foreskin cheese, the tires firewall blocks access to most social media, all except Tumblr, all image hosting sites, all image endi- ending in an extension other than PNG. And everything critical of tires or leftism, and all mentions of Santa Claus or butt plugs, there are no toilets and tires. Upper Nock is bordered by Retye to the south, Green Acres to the southeast, 
Isle Purd to the east, North Megek, and Central Megek to the west. It is currently run by Great and Holy Governor Lord Peru, and is unofficially named Peru Land. Upper Knox slash Peru Land has been 100% Peruvian Baptist Holy Christian since 2020, the same year the religion was created. The religion was exactly the same as Christianity, except it, God is replaced by Lord Peru. Government Governors in Upper Knock have nearly unlimited power. The state's devoted police and militia execute their every order and enforce every law, no matter how insane. State governors live on a constantly themed island located in the northeast of the state and are forbidden from permanently leaving it even after their term ends. If they leave the island, they will be followed by armed guards. As with all other Nokians, governors are forbidden from leaving the state. Gubernatorial orders in the state are often deranged. In 1997, an event... In an event named the Downsizing, His Supreme Highness Governor Sampson III ordered that half the population be executed. This was done to fix a relatively minor housing shortage. Sadly, over 3 million innocent Nokians lost their lives in the Downsizing. Every governor is allowed a maximum of four years and two terms unless they are elected by a popular vote. To vote, citizens must write the name of who they wish to elect as governor. Unless a governor wills it, which they rarely do, nothing else is voted on. If the governor attempts to change the maximum term length or number of terms and or the way in which governors are chosen or several other things, their militia and police will turn against them and kill them. Whenever a governor is elected, several things usually happen in random order. The old governor is executed. All laws are removed. The new governor creates all new laws, flag, anthem, name. All potential rivals, rival groups are executed. The governor gives himself a new name and or title. Upon coronation of a new governor, all citizens immediately convert to the new governor's party to avoid execution. Usually, only the most prominent supporters of former governor slash party are killed. Most citizens of the state are secretly apolitical due to fear of execution and have a massive fear of revealing their true political views, or in some cases even having political views. Citizens usually try to vote for the mildest candidate, but upper knock politicians almost always hide their true views, so this is nearly impossible. Upper knock's name has been changed thousands of times by various governors. The federal government stopped acknowledging these name changes after 167 name change requests were submitted in a single year by Royal Governor Sir Rocklehorn Bingo Bongo Bingo. Officially, Upper Knox's name is the one it had when it was first admitted into the Union. Discland is a state in the mid mid midwestern region of the United States of America. It is bordered by herds and just ask to the north, Lost in east, Yurst in the south, and Sackers and Clome in the west. According to the US Department of Backstate Travel, there are reports that the state's eastern border also includes the US backstate of Plasted, Leshed, in Kansas. However, there is currently no scientific data which demonstrates conclusively that this is true. The state is notable for the extreme difficulty of entering the state. Its underground cities, as well as its strict non-citizen resident laws, several human rights groups have accused this state government of tolerating or even encouraging human rights abuses and interference and just asks ongoing civil wars. Despite this, Discland has consistently been given the highest rank by both Human Rights Watch as well as the U.S. Department of Backstate Travel and the United Nations. This has led to several conspiracy theories which have been debunked by Scopes that Disc 
that this gland exerts undue control over several national and international organizations. The capital city of this gland is is Iwazakanathal, which is the largest cube city of Discland. This vast, vast underground complex is 1.5 miles deep and 1.5 miles wide. Numerous elevators allow travel throughout the city, and it is believed that the majority of the state's residents live in this cube city. The state boasts a unique culture which many outsiders may find incomprehensible. The official state model of, motto of Discland is, he is in the depths. He hungers, we must awaken him, as is the will of God. The world shall drown in blood. Law and government. According to official sources, the, gov the current governor of Discland is Governor John Smith. However, this is difficult to independently verify given the fact the governor has never left the state, and there are no known photographs of Mr. Smith. He succeeded... He succeeded Governor James Johnson in 2002 after his 10-year term. There are also no known photographs of Mr. Johnson or any governor in Discland history. Interestingly, every single governor of Discland has served exactly 10 years in, er in office before retiring forever. It is believed that much of the legislative power in Discland rests with the Council of 600, a body composed of... Council of 600, a body composed of the owners of the exactly 600 underground cube cities of Discland. Passage into the state is absolutely forbidden unless you are a citizen or have documents proving that you are officially recognized by the state government to freely enter. In addition, immigration of non-citizen residents may also occur through a special internship program. And those who are granted the opportunity to work in the state have seen shipped in via have been shipped in via the modern rail network culture and demographics it is the official and most widely used language in disclaimed is english which is spoken by 100 percent of the population it is unknown whether english was always spoken in the state or whether it was adopted after 1865 when the state officially entered the union Many linguists, as well as those who have interacted with Disclanders, have noted their manner of speech is unusually slow and terse. Disclanders tend to grin when they speak to outsiders. The official population of Discland is exactly 10 million, and has remained this, numbers, this number since records were first shared with the U.S. government in 1905. This re the religious makeup of the state is difficult to ascertain. According to the most recent sources, 96% of the state's citizens are officially of an unknown religion. The other 4% are Jewish. An unknown number of non-citizen residents working as interns are also are kept in the state. Collecting demographic data on non-citizen residents is difficult. Discaland is notable for its 600 underground cities in which 98% of the population lives, works, dies, and is recycled. Only 2% of the population lives above surface, mostly in the tall grass of eastern Discland or along the border. Clothing is a uniform act across all citizens of the state, consisting of dark of a dark purple robe and veil. Both sexes also wear a long, chime-like belt of numerous metal knives and bones. Non-citizen resident interns, on the other hand, are stripped naked upon arrival. Economy. Little is understood about the economy of this gland. The state does not report, export, or import any resources Disclanders have never been observed performing manual labor. Citizens tend to be seen huddling together, looking at each other without speaking for hours on end. However, non-citizen residents work as permanent interns and perform all manual labor under direction from their Discland overseers. A 2014 interview with of several of those who have previously escaped have described working conditions of Discland as worse than hell. 
unending, unrelenting, brutal labor in the depths. No sleep. Screaming, the screaming, the screaming, the screaming, the screaming, the screaming. Open bracket, five, close bracket. This report, along with others, has led researchers to conclude that much of the economy production within the state is devoted to hollowing out the bedrock underneath the state and replacing it with some sort of machinery. However, a large person... A large portion of the workers are separated for special work in the inner chambers of the capital city of Iwasakhanathal. Environment and time. This land is a semi-arid, like a semi-arid like Eurist and Lost. Its northern border is demarcated along the Nag Naganadaka River. The eastern portion of the state is predominantly flat, rising to rolling hills in the western portion. The western portion of the state is notable for its famous porcelain forests, the only such forests in the USA. The porcelain forests stretch west until they reach the clone border. Environmental shift zone, a unique ecological phenomenon where the climate, geology, and topography, and topography shift suddenly at the border of clone. The plains of eastern Discland are home to a vast grassland. The grass, predominantly mammoth grass, grows exceptionally tall, thick, and fast. This would render agricultural development difficult. If Disclanders farmed on land, the grassy steppe is home to America's last living species of terror birds, as well as a host of other dangerous animals. However, the U.S. Department of Backstate Travel warns that the most dangerous hazards for humans lie within the dis in the Discland steppe are grass worms. A species of pitcher plant of the Nepenthes gene genus, these carniv these carnivorous plants have been known to produce traps up to ten feet in depth, which swallow deer, terror birds and even humans through the camouflaged trapdoor. The unfortunate victims are slowly digested over the course of several weeks. Discland sets at the center of the mid, mid, mid North American time shift zone. The natural phenomenon adds six days to each month, except for April, which loses four days. The temporal anomaly has been blamed for the numerous airplane crashes in the time shift zone. The causes of this temporal anomaly remain a mystery. Some horologists have theorized that this is a natural phenomenon that is the result of gravitational imbalances by the folding of the fabric of space, which causes longitudinal stretching in the backstate region. However, other horologists have pointed out That this does not explain why the time shift zone is localized to disc land and its neighbors and not the whole of the region. Others point out that the time shift zone was unreported by travelers before 1967, leading many horologists to speculate that this phenomenon is a recently develop is a recent development. This has also caused speculation among conspiracy theorists that the time shift zone is an anthropogenic phenomenon caused by disclanders themselves. However, the SPLC and the ADL, the UN and the CIA, the Bilderberg Group, and several other credible sources have pointed out that these are nothing more than racist, anti-Semitic, neo-Nazi conspiracy theories. Or are they? History. The origin of Discland remains somewhat unclear. Most backstate historians believe that the modern population of Disclanders migrated to the region due during the mid -century, second century AD. However, a growing number of backstate historians now subscribe to the theory that the population of Discland predates the Iron Age that the mid-2nd century migration was merely refugees seeking refuge among an already established sister group, what is known as the Archonship of Discland, 
was fully established in its current state since the 3rd century AD. During this time, a band of Native Americans was abducted and taken to the underground capital city of Iwazakanathal. There, according to Aztec legends, the tribesmen were tortured in every possible manner. Their scarred skin was surgically removed from the living prisoners and sewn onto, the large sphe onto a large spherical object deep in the heart of the ancient city. As they covered this ancient orb with the fresh skin, it began to pulsate with life in the darkness. As it throbbed in the eternal night of Iwazakanathal, fed and bathed in the blood of th thousands of Indian children, it began to speak. However, more credible historians have determined that this is merely superstition. What is known, what is, what is known is that the enslaved Native Americans revolted in the 9th century AD. After a deadly rebellion, the survivors escaped and fled, migrating south and settling in modern-day Mexico. During this period, this land fell into a decline, and numerous foreign groups were able to establish themselves in the region. By the 12th century AD, the rising uh, kingdom of Hestiers began to absorb the surrounding regions into their empire. In 1304, the chieftain of Jasadaka asked the king of Hestiers to assist them in breaking away from the domination of the Disclanders. This led to the Great Plains War, 1304-1355. This war resulted in the destruction of the first Discland Imperium, and the ensuing peace treaty, all vassals of Discland were allowed to declare independence. Discland recovered over the next 100 years, and in the 15th century, the Arkan ship of Discland used the magic of the ancient deep to repolarize the entire region, and this disaster led to the decline of the Hestiers Empire and the destruction of Ralgast. This precipitated a dark age of which a few records remain. Disclain next appears in the historical records in 1809 during the second Lewis and Clark expedition. William Clark noted in his noted in his record of the journey June 4th, 1809. This expedition has encountered what can only be described as the most sinister and dangerous people on earth. We must be wary of them, for they will surely seek to take advantage of our republic in some future moment of weakness. The state agreed to accept dipl diplomatic relations with the young United States. Lewis and Clark decided not to offer them statehood. However, in 1865, after the long and traumatic U.S. Civil War, the, the polity eagerly sent representative, representatives to the war. Weary U.S. government and the state was accepted into the Union. After joining the USA, the state of Discland began to grow prosperous. During the Second Industrial Revolution, Discland this pioneered a young workforce relocation enterprise where orphaned or underappreciated children were given new opportunities to work as permanent interns in Discland. This influx of young children helped rejuvenate the declining state and allowed the government to pursue a policy of resurrecting him, a phrase which many economists have determined means improving the local economy. In 1997, the neighboring state of Justask was plunged into chaos when the monarchy was overthrown, beginning the 14th Justask Civil War. Several observers have made the, accus the accusation that Discland is responsible for both the, overflow the overthrow of the monarchy as well as providing funding for several different sides of the complex and multifaceted civil war. These accusations have yet to be independently verified by a reputable source such as an official government organization. Yerst is a state in the mid-southern to midwestern region of the United States of America. It is now bordered by Discland in the north Loist and Greater and Basie in the east, 
New Tate's in the south and Leshid and Clome in the west. The state has a total land area of 100,000, 13,000, 113,569 square miles and a population of 397,000. 659 in 2019. The state is largely flat and arid due to the north with increasing aridity in the western portions of the state. The southern portion of the state is hilly with increasing elevation until reaching the Raladonia mountain range. Yurst is the only U.S. state with more than one town called Middletown of which the state boasts at least 28 separate towns, all named Middletown. The state is notable for its disappearing rivers and its large number of ghost towns. And being one of the 13 states affected by the mid-mid-mid North American time shift zone, the state is home to the world's tallest freestanding jungle gym, which is located in Middletown. The state capital is Middletown. Since the mid-19th century, the state has experienced a large population shift away from the north and to the more temperate southern half of the state. The U.S. Department of Barks of Back State Travel ranks Yurst as mildly dangerous in comparison with other states in the region. The harsh desert landscape of the north has claimed the lives of numerous stranded travelers, the numerous identical towns have also been reported to confuse travelers. In addition, there are many reports of hazardous entities such as Dancing Jeremiah, the Lady of Interstate 56, the Boar of Lumpin County, and the Redback Sand Snake of Middletown. The USDBT recommends avoiding travel through the state. At the end of each month, especially April, due to the mid-mid-mid-North American time shift effect. Geography and Climate Yurst can be roughly divided into northern and southern zones. The north is predominantly flat, with arid and semi-arid desert. The northern half of the state sits atop a porous limestone bedrock. This has led to the formation of thousands of sinkholes across the landscape. The Yurst Desert ends abruptly at the Clome Border Environmental Shift Zone, a unique ecological phenomenon where the climate, geology, and topography shift suddenly at the border of Clome. The, the topography changes as one moves south, rising into the foothills of the Raladonia mountain range. This region experiences slightly more rainfall, allowing for growth of dense cedar woodland in the far south. The three major rivers of Yurst originate in the low mountains of Raladonia, traveling north before falling into the Silver Edge Bullfrog and Gordon sinkholes. Due to the three largest rivers disappearing into these three large sinkholes, northern Yurst receives no water from these river systems. The rivers continue flowing underneath the Yurst Desert, eventually re-emerging abruptly at the Clome border. These huge sinkholes are among the largest sinkholes in the world. Every second, hundreds of thousands of cubic feet of water flows down into the three major waterfalls in the sinkholes, falling up to 150 feet into the black depths of the limestone cave system below. Mountains of Raladonia are rich in material wealth, including gold. Extraction of gold ore is a major enterprise in the state and has been since the region was settled in the 19th century. Culture and Demographics The predominant language of Yurst is English, which is spoken as first language by 88% of the population. According to the 2010 2010 census, the state is majority white, experiencing little Latino immigration due to both the difficulty of crossing the Raladonia mountain range as well as reputation for xenophobia. The ethnic, the ethnic makeup of the state is 40.1% English, 21.7% German, 20.2% Polish, 10.1% Hispanic, 
7.4 Native American, and 0.5% other. Yerst is famous for its extraordinarily large number of towns and cities called Middletown. There are at least 28 such towns, most of them located along the I-56 highway in the, in the Yerst Desert. However, several middle towns are located in the higher elevations of the south. These towns, as well as the state's non-middle towns, have almost identical layouts. This has been known to confuse travelers. The reason for the large number of middle towns is a subject of some debate among backstate historians, as the early records of the settlement of the territory were lost when the original capital of the state, Middletown, was swallowed by a large sinkhole, Blue Rock's Pit. The most popular theory is that the settlement names are a coincidence of geography. The difficulty of travel during the early settlement of the state prevented journeys between towns, thus a large portion of towns simultaneously were named Middletown. This explains why the majority of middle towns are located in the north, where travel in the 19th century was more difficult and less hazardous south. Another controversial theory holds that the large number of middle towns is evidence that Yerst is the center of an interdimensional merge vector, where different timelines merge into a single timeline, confined to a physical space. This theory postulates that at least 28 different timelines in years to have merged, bringing together middle towns from each one. Proponents of this theory point to the mid-mid-mid North American time shift zone as an effect of this event. However, critics of this theory point out that there is little evidence that the MMMNATSC existed before the, the mid-19th century, while records, while records indicate indicate that Yerst, that all Yerst middle towns predate this event. Yerst is the birthplace to many inventors and artists, such as Blart, Bart Clanchers, inventor of the electric rake, and famed artist Rupert Ulipses. The Middletown Park playground has the tallest freestanding jungle gym in the world. However, despite the high rate of injuries sustained in the small city due to the structure and even taller structures planned to be built in the capital, Middletown. This day's official, official sport is tire surfing, and they're currently, they currently hold the record for winning the most interstate tire surfing championships. The state tire surfing team are the Middletown Sandstormers. History before the arrival of the Europeans, Yerst was a home to several Native American tribes, however, they never did anything. European settlers first arrived during the Spanish Expedition of 1595 under the leadership of Francisco Levia. After crossing the Raladonia Mountains, he set up several trading outposts such as Los Centrales. However, by the 18th century, the region was forgotten by the Spanish and the Mexican government. During this time, English settlers entered the region from Texas during the Mexican-American War 1846 to 1848. The territory quietly joined the United States without incident. It was during this time that the original capital, Middletown, is thought to have been founded at the junction between the Yerst Desert and the Uplands. In 1849, gold was discovered in the Raladonia Mountains, leading to a population boom. It was in this environment in 1871 that the rogue priest Ezra the Holy amassed a nomadic horde of religious devotees in the desert and carved out a bloody desert kingdom stretching across northern Yerst and Lost, the Holy Order of New Jerusalem, which based in the small outpost of Middletown sought to atone for mankind's sins by kidnapping travelers and settlers and torturing them. Victims were taken underground to fortified Zinkel caves where they were subjected to unimaginable tortures to cleanse their earthly bodies of sin. The band grew to be one of the most fearsome gangs in the region, as they were known to be utterly unflinching in the, in the face of pain or death. The cult was eventually destroyed after an expensive campaign by U.S. Rangers to root out the religious cult and restore the trade in with the gold-rich territory. This campaign culminated in the Siege of Depths, 1874. 
a four-month-long campaign in the Hellwater cave system after the band retreated into the extensive sinkhole network. The territory officially became a state in 1888, however, tragedy befell the new state in 1889 after a large sinkhole opened up underneath the capital Middletown. This disaster destroyed the entire city and killed approximately 5,000 people. A new capital was established 